The lunatic is on the grass The lunatic is on the grass As the campaign heats up and Romney continues to falter under relentless attacks from the Obama regime, many of the prostitute commentators are calling his choice for Paul Ryan as VP a breath of fresh air. And it may be for Romney's campaign, but how might this pan out for us? Is Romney desperately trying to change the dynamics of the race by putting Ryan's controversial budget plan out in front in order to distract us from some of the dire issues facing our country like restoring the republic or stopping the subjugation of our sovereign and individual rights and freedom to the new world order cabal when and only when these issues are addressed will we have the foundation to address and take steps to effectively and properly resolve issues on the economy jobs the corrupt banking system, and the decline of the dollar, to name just a few of the dire problems we're facing. Is the Romney-Ryan ticket just going to be another tool for the global government agenda to continue the destruction of the United States Republic from within? There's no doubt Ryan's a bright guy. He's supported by the Tea Party and claims to be a conservative who believes in smaller government. Let's take a look at his voting record on some of the high profile issues that not only affect us as a nation, but affect us on an individual level as well. May 2002, voted for the NDAA for fiscal year 2003, the Patriot Act expansion. This bill allocated $383 billion of our dollars to be spent on, among other things, counterterrorism, nuclear weapons development, and military R&D. December 2007, voted for NDAA appropriations for fiscal year 2008. This bill allocates another $688 billion, over one half a trillion dollars for the quote unquote the war on terrorism. Although this bill provides a pay increase for active duty military and additional benefits for 100% disabled veterans, it also provides for complete electronic sharing of personal health care and medical history information among other government agencies. This bill will become one of the main pillars of the Obamacare legislation. February 2011 voted for the extension of various Patriot Act provisions set to expire in 2011, primarily electronic surveillance. And now today, we are living in a total police state. May 2011, voted for the Patriot Act extension. This bill extends the expiration date of the U.S. Patriot Act until June 1, 2015. Most Americans now feel that this bill was the beginning of the end of America. Ladies and gentlemen, this shit has got to go. May 2012, voted for National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2013. This bill provides for another $107 billion for the NDAA. This includes $88.5 billion for overseas contingency operations for fiscal year 2013 and another $18 billion for DOE national security programs. It also provides for armed services force reductions through the year 2017, leaving a standing army of less than 552,000 and a combined military force of 1.4 million by 2013 ranking the United States seventh in total military force. So where is all this money going? October 2003, voted for the Homeland Security Appropriations for fiscal year 2004. This was a $29 billion distribution of your money to the nightmare known as Homeland Security. 5.2 billion of disbursements under this bill went to the TSA. October 2004, again voted for 
the Homeland Security Department fiscal year 2005 appropriations bill, which allocated another $32 billion for Homeland Security. October 2006 voted to give another $35 billion to Homeland Security. It seems the more money over time that we, meaning you and I, are being forced to contribute to Homeland Security, the more this government is telling us we must fear terrorist activity within our borders. Are you seeing a pattern? It should be apparent. Government is the biggest threat to our liberties and our security. September 2011 voted for the Department of Homeland Security Appropriations Act. This bill appropriates the continuing of any and all funding of the Department of Homeland Security through September 30th, 2012. August 2007 voted for implementing the 911 Commission's Recommendation Act. This was a $10 billion appropriation to, among other things, provide grants to assist high-risk urban areas in preventing, preparing for, protecting against, and responding to acts of terrorism. TSA's Operation Viper, TSA checkpoints, and identification of domestic terror threats. You know, like returning vets, constitutionalists, and Tea Party members. October. 2012 voted for the Federal Aviation Administration Act of 2012. This bill appropriates over $40 billion for FAA operations, including the development of a comprehensive plan for the integration of civil unmanned aircraft systems. That's right, drones into our national airspace within 270 days of the enactment date of this bill and requires the FAA to execute the plan by no later than September 30th, 2015. See section 332 of this bill. April 2012 voted for the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, or CISPA. Among other things, this bill defines a self-protected entity. As any other entity other than an individual, you have no rights or expectation of privacy or protection from any threat of prosecution under the guise of intent under the way this bill is written. May 2012 voted no to repealing indefinite military detention provisions in the NDAA. This amendment would have prohibited the U.S. military from detaining individuals captured or arrested in the United States without trial or from, being trans or from transferring such individuals to military custody. Although this bill highlights members of Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, we are aware it also applies to U.S. citizens. Now let's take a look at his record on military and defense spending and government expansion. August 2004 voted for the Defense Department fiscal year 2005 appropriations bill. This bill financed an additional one half trillion dollars to the military industrial machine in Iraq and Afghanistan. This bill, this this budget provides 121 billion dollars for military equipment and maintenance. This is laughable. I had a family member who was deployed in Iraq from 2005 to 2007. He told me when a piece of equipment like a transport truck or a Humvee needed simple maintenance like replacing a spark plug or replacing a dead battery, the Army would trash the entire piece of equipment. They would relegate the equipment to a burn pit where it would be disposed of. Why? Because they did not stock any replacement or maintenance parts for this equipment. So instead of replacing a $120 battery in a $120,000 Humvee, they put a requisition in to replace the Humvee. This is how the government spends our tax dollars. This is just another example of the monumental waste of taxpayer money. That's your money and my money. January 2006 voted for an additional one half trillion dollars for military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. September 2006, again voted for an additional 
$437 billion, almost another $1.5 trillion to perpetuate military operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. November 2007 voted for an additional one half trillion dollars to perpetuate the wars in the Middle East which also includes another 20 million dollars to develop an arrow defense missile program for that's right Israel February 2011 voted for reducing federal funding to the US Institute of Peace Although this institution only required tens of millions, not hundreds of billions or trillions of dollars, it appears <coughs> excuse me, to have been successful in finding peaceful solutions for issues facing struggling nations and quelling insurrection in those nations, avoiding national or NATO military involvement. Its funding has been discontinued. I think you can guess why. February 2011 voted no to reducing Navy and Air Force aircraft procurement. This was a bill to reduce Navy and Air Force procurements by a mere $420 million. March 2011 voted no on removing troops from Afghanistan. This was a resolution for the President to remove U.S. Armed Forces from Afghanistan by December 31st, 2011. May. 2011 voted no to removing armed forces from Libya June 2011 voted no on limited limiting the use of funds in support of NATO operations in Libya this bill would have limited the use of funds appropriated to the Department of Defense to be used by our military in support of NATO operations in Libya this is a facilitation which merges our military forces into the NATO military machine. Let's look at foreign aid. January 2002 voted for the Foreign Operations for Fiscal Year 2002 Appropriations. This bill provides $15.4 billion of your tax dollars to go to providing health and medical services in foreign countries. It also provides $450 million in economic aid to Israel. July 2006 voted for another $22 billion in foreign aid appropriation. This includes foreign narcotics control, foreign military funding, and another $2.4 in military funding to Israel. July 2003 voted for the Foreign Operations Appropriations for Fiscal Year 2004. This bill provides $17 billion for foreign aid and development. November 2003 voted for the Emergency Supplemental Appropriation Act for Defense. This bill provides $87.5 billion to rebuild Iraq and Afghanistan, a practice our corrupt governments engaged in since World War I, going into foreign wars, ravage our enemies, and sometimes even our ally nations, and then go in and finance and rebuild those nations. This only serves to, to benefit the global banks and mega corporations contracted by government. Economic Stimulus and Foreign Trade, August 2001, voted for the Andean Trade Preference Act extension. This bill provides for preferential trade status for imports from various South American countries, thus encouraging domestic manufacturers to relocate to these countries as evidenced by the provision in this bill, which provides for job search, education, and health insurance assistance to American workers who have been displaced due to this policy. Voted for this bill again in 2002. This version, however, also provides $90 million to U.S. Customs for anti-terrorism and narcotics detection. Kind of ironic, 
as our government is the largest drug trafficker in America. It also restores the President's trade negotia negotiating authority, and we all see how well that's working to bolster America's industrial base. May 2003 voted for the Jobs and Economics Growth Bill. This bill allocated $350 billion in stimulus to try and promote economic growth and was the forerunner for future mega stimulus bailouts for the too big to fails. July 2006 voted no to the Commerce Department Appropriations Bill for fiscal year 2006. This bill would have appropriated only $59.8 billion to science and R&D programs, which could have opened up new fields of technology and infused some new blood into a stagnant economy. It would have also provided for $7.5 billion for small business loans, which would have also helped to organically stimulate our dismal economic condition. December 2010 voted no for allowing funds from the TARP program to help assist individual homeowners, people like you and me who are facing foreclosure. Instead, these economic stimulus appropriations allocated our money and our children's prosperity to the mega banks and global corporations. redistribution of wealth, more government expansion, and legislation supporting globalist agendas and other legislation that directly impacts you and me. February 2000, voted for the Bankruptcy Reform Bill, which imposes a means test, which would force individuals to liquidate all of their assets in order to file Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Otherwise, they'll be forced to file Chapter 13 bankruptcy and mandated to repay $15,000 or 25% to creditors under a court-appointed repayment schedule. Where's the mandate requiring failed government-sponsored companies and programs like Solyndra to, to repay the taxpayers after they go bankrupt? October 1999, voted for fiscal year 2000 Agriculture Appropriations Bill. This was a $69 billion bill with $21.6 billion going to food stamps and $14 billion going to welfare programs. $1.1 billion was allocated to the FDA, which is a criminal organization. It is nothing more than a product marketing and solicitation arm of Big Pharma. May. 2001 voted for no child left behind the anticipated cost of this act for fiscal year 2002 through 2006 was a whopping 150 billion dollars this legislation was what was one of the key facilitators in the dumbing down of our kids little known but one of the major planks of this bill was guaranteed military recruiting agencies direct access to schools and pupils regardless of faith-based learning institutions or philosophical conflicts with war and killing. November 2001 voted for <clears throat> the Labor, HHS, and Educational Appropriations Act for fiscal year 2002. This bill provides an additional 123 billion in discretionary spending to these agencies. Really? That's $123 billion of your money they can spend as they see fit. Make no mistake, it's a blank check. September 2004, again voted for an additional $143 billion for the redistribution of your wealth in fiscal year 2005. July 2001, voted for the Community Solutions Act. This act is basically a welfare expansion bill which provides an additional $13.3 billion of your tax money to hand out additional social services and be distributed through churches, 
and other private nonprofit organizations. July 2003, voted for Project BioShield. This bill provides $13 billion for vaccine R&D, which also indicates a provision for HHS to use untested vaccines on the public, i.e. the practice of undisclosed testing on our military as well. July 2004, voted for the Agriculture and Rural Development Appropriations Bill. This bill funds another $87 billion for Agenda 21 and rewilding programs in America. November 2005, again voted for an additional $63 billion for social welfare programs, more mandatory wealth redistribution for fiscal year 2006. January 2004, voted for the Consolidated Appropriations Act. The price tag for this bill was a whopping $820 billion, almost $1 trillion. Some of the allocations include $328 billion in discretionary spending. What? $328 billion in discretionary spending. No doubt this money went to the big banks and the mega corporations, for sure. $17 billion went to the CFR. $140 billion went to the Department of Labor, HHS, and Education. Welfare programs which are designed to redistribute your wealth. $91 billion to the Department of the VA, Housing and Urban Development, and Independent Agencies. More wealth distribution. $17 billion for Big Agra, Rural Development, and the FDA. This money undoubtedly ended up in the pockets of companies like Monsanto and Big Pharma. Our tax dollars are funding these efforts under Agenda 21. April 2005, voted for the Fiscal Year 2006 Budget Appropriations Resolution. This was another $2.2 trillion re resolution with almost one half or $979 billion allocated for discretionary spending. Really? Discretionary? Now, I don't mean to yell, but now people, you know where that money, our money, ended up. That's right, it ended up in the pockets of the too big to fails and the mega banks. June 2005, voted for the Interior Department Fiscal Year 2005 Appropriations Bill. This bill provides for $19.5 billion for, among other things, land acquisitions. That's right, the rewilding of America, Agenda 21. October 2011, voted for the inclusion of Social Security benefits in the calculation of modified adjusted gross income. This bill amends the definition of modified adjusted gross income to include any amount of Social Security benefits previously previously excluded from gross income. This is a tax increase on the elderly. September 2007 voted no to the Educational Assistance Modification Act. This bill would have increased Pell Grants to $5,400 to catch up with inflationary cost increases in higher education. It would have also provided an interest rate reduction for federally subsidized education loans from 6.8% to 3.4% by 2012. April 2008, voted no to federal funding for voting system changes. This was a vote to pass a bill that provides federal funding for certain jurisdictions to obtain paper ballot voting systems or to conduct audits or hand counts of voting results in general elections for federal office that were to be held in November of 2008. Wait a minute, wasn't that the year Obama was elected? This would have helped in cases where voter fraud was suspected to verify discrepancies in electronic voting systems. And last but not least, July 2010, voted no on whistleblower protection for offshore oil workers. You know, right after the BP oil spill, Oh, and when was that? Oh, yeah, that's right. April 2010.
It is important to note that although Ryan has voted on some positive legislation, like Romney, Ryan has flip-flopped on issues like gay rights, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, TARP, the Cuban trade embargo, and there are many more that I came across reviewing his voting record over the past 12 years. I know this video is going to offend many of the dyed-in-the-wool Republicans and some of the conservatives out there, but people, let me assure you, it is not my intent. This information is being provided to provoke you to do your own research and think for yourselves. Don't let any political party or candidate or mainstream propaganda tell you how you should vote or how you should think. As far as Paul Ryan is concerned, I'll leave you with this thought. By his deeds, you shall know him. What was the statement he made during the TARP legislation on the floor? I believe it was, quote, Madam Speaker, this bill offends my principles, but I'm going to vote for this bill in order to preserve my principles. If anybody out there can explain what this means, I'd be really interested I seem to recall Bush Jr. making a similar st statement, something the, along the lines of, quote, in order to save the free market, I'm going to have to kill the free market, or something to, to that effect. Anyway, the conclusions I've drawn from my research is that he is pro-war, pro-military industrial complex, pro-government expansion, pro-redistribution of wealth, and pro-Wall Street and economic stimulus. If elected, he will have to march to the beat of Romney's drum. Make no mistake, Romney's a globalist with strong ties to Wall Street, and he will do what he is told. Remember, no one campaigning for your vote is going to tell you the truth. They're all going to tell you what you want to hear. So, what do we do? Well, if you're like me, you know that this two-party system is an illusion. There is no real difference between Republicans and Democrats. You know that the chosen puppets on either side answer to the same beast. Only the methods in which they carry out their agenda differs in the way each party perceives what is actually happening. We are given the illusion we have a choice. But the choice between the lesser of two evils is no choice at all. Presidents have been selected, not elected, in our country for the better part of the last 90 years. Those of us who have played by the rules set forth by our, our republic have gotten screwed over the last 50 years or more. They've rigged the game and you're just along for the ride. If you're conscious of this fact, then unplug yourself from the matrix. Don't vote. If you feel a compelling need to vote anyway, vote for an independent. Don't play into this charade. Let these minions know that you're not gonna play this game anymore. Please feel free to post your comments for discussion below. Oh, and by the way, to all the trolls out there, your tactic of trashing the content presented, name calling, and berating other viewers' comments, your content will be deleted and you will be blocked from this channel. This is a forum for adults to express their views and concerns. If you despise the content presented, don't subscribe. And let, re re let me remind you, no one is forcing you to watch these videos. Thank you for watching and please share this, these videos. Still sleeping? Are you awake yet?